I started working here as a PhD student in 1989, so over 23 years ago, and started what we described then as the Botswana Wild Dog Research Project. That project has grown into what we now call the Botswana Predator Conservation Trust. We've expanded the scope of our research to include all the large carnivores, uh, population monitoring, uh, field research and behavioral ecology, uh, applied science to management and conservation of large carnivores, and we've also expanded to include uh, addressing farming practices that are predator friendly or wildlife friendly and so forth, as well as conservation education um, among the primary school age kids of the region. In recent years, we have developed uh, the bioboundary research to integrate uh, a very complex and sophisticated chemistry with the field research so that we have a back and forth between the field and observations on free-ranging population of wild dogs and the laboratory analyses that are taking place that give us an opportunity to try and actually experiment with some of the results we get uh, from the chemistry. Our aim is to try to replicate the message that they use to keep other packs out of our own ranges in the hope that that will keep dogs within the safety of the conservation areas. Somewhere in the scent mark sample in this jar is a chemical or a mix of chemicals which sends the specific home range message and that's the one that we're interested in analysing. The analyses are carried out in a top spec GC mass spec laboratory which is equipped with instruments that we've modified ourselves in order to allow them to tackle the extremely challenging problems of analysing genuine land scent marks. It's really important before we start developing uh, an artificial bioboundary that we really understand how wild dogs use scent naturally. We are undertaking an extensive amount of fieldwork on several collared study packs of wild dogs. A large part of our fieldwork that involves the collection of scent samples. Um, these samples are collected from known individuals in known contexts, accompanied by the detailed behavioural observations as well. That really is a valuable source of information in sifting through the chemical noise and focusing down on what the key territorial signals are in African wildlife scents. In order to understand African wild dogs, we have to also understand their competitors, so that's lions and hyenas. And what we call the Large Predator Guild involves lions, hyena, wild dog, but also cheetah and leopard. All of those predators use the same resources, use the same space. So understanding what their needs are in order to mediate conflicts, what kind of habitat do they need, what kind of space do they need, what kind of prey do they need to have a healthy guild population are some of the key questions that we're working on here at the research camp. The two main ways in which we do that is one, using radio collars um, that allow us to get detailed information on where the animals are moving in relation to each other. So we can see when in the same space at the same time, how do lions and wild dogs respond to each other. The other way um, that we collect this data is through behavioural observations and that involves um, tracking animals, finding them and then collecting data on what they're doing and where they're doing it. Domestic dogs kind of run feral throughout villages and towns around northern Botswana and those animals constitute a severe threat to wildlife. And so uh, we work closely in helping the Mount Animal Welfare Society generate the requisite funds for surgical equipment and for their operations because it's so important to managing uh, diseases that are important to wild dogs and uh, other wild carnivores. We target areas around the wildlife to stop the spread of uh, canine diseases and we've now just vaccinated over 10,000 dogs. We deworm, we cut nails, we vaccinate. So we really try and give them back an animal that they then become very proud of. The spin-off in the aftercare of the dog and the education that's been spread is fantastic. The Shrovey Livestock Insurance Initiative is a pilot study to attempt to restructure the way in which compensation works for rural farmers. 
The conversation is really set up with the mission of minimizing the extent to which farmers experience economic loss by carnivores. Coaching for Conservation is the primary social development project of the Botswana Predator Conservation Trust, and it's responding to the reality that conservation is about people. You can't tell somebody to care about something. They have to feel it. They have to believe it. They have to own it. And that's the difference between Coaching for Conservation and many other education programs out there. It's not a knowledge-based program alone. It's incorporating many different modalities of teaching and learning. And it's about creating a situation where kids actually empathize with wildlife. They're not being told to like them. They're starting to feel for themselves a reason why they like those animals and why they want to protect them themselves. The Coaching for Conservation Learning from Wildlife model is based on learning about the animal, learning from the animal, in order to find behaviors that we can change or use to protect those animals. One, two, three, four.